now that the stakeholders have become comfortable with the model and they've challenged the assumptions and they're relatively confident they're on uh, a solid ground, it's now appropriate to determine where the leverage is, where places where alterations in the existing model can be made so that it will produce the the desired set of changes in the in the behavior of the system though it's appropriate to understand that that systems in fact exist in a in a dynamic equilibrium the the purpose of this example is to, is to simply give you a sense of the the behavior of the system itself is the result of all of these interactions between these elements in the system and if if one simply decides to to apply a force to this point h and and move it so that its behavior is changed you can in fact alter the behavior of that system as long as that force or tension is in fact applied but what it does is it actually stretches the other set of interactions that are in place that that haven't been modified and if this tension is removed the system will in fact simply go back to the way it was before that's this is sort of an, an inroad to a set of, of most insightful system laws about complex systems in terms of if you if you think about a really complex set of interactions there are some truths about that set of interactions that it's most appropriate to, to keep in mind as as you seek out the the leverage points the first being complex systems for the most part are self-organizing the the the, res, the structure the operation the behavior is a result of all of the interactions between the components um, it's the behavior patterns are in fact a result of of all of those interactions and that set that said that whole set of interactions has a have has basins of stability as i showed in the previous diagram there's there's a dynamic equilibrium that exists and the system can in fact move to points of instability and very quickly will then migrate to back to the same or a different basin of stability the the law the feedback law says the output output of a complex system is essentially dominated by the feedback that results from that output that individual inputs to the system are pretty much irrelevant and that's essentially an outgrowth of the fact that that the system is self-organized it is the the interactions between the elements that are responsible for the behavior of the system so individual disconnected inputs from in from different places are likely to have a very minimal effect on the system and the cor the corollary to that is that all outputs that are important to the system will have associated feedback loops so that if there is in fact something because the the output is is governed to a great extent by the feedback that happens as a result of that output if there are in fact outputs from the system that are desired there there needs to be feedback from that output back to the system so that it understands the the implications of that output otherwise it's that output isn't likely to to be maintained or achieved and the law of requisite variety says that that any attempt to regulate the system the regular has the regulator needs to be as have at least as much variety as what it's attempting to to regulate and that's because of the complex nature of the system and the interactions so that if if whatever it is that's attempting to regulate the system doesn't have the requisite variety it will simply be overwhelmed by the variety of the system itself so in terms of those understanding of those laws and trying to figure out where one goes about modifying the structure of the system to affect the desired behavior the the best thing that i have found to date is in fact a paper by donella meadows called uh, leverage points and in that paper she identifies 
12 different types of alterations that one can make to a system and each and they're ordered from the easiest to implement to the most dip, difficult to implement and they're listed here from 12 to, to 1 12 being the easiest to implement though the easiest to implement has the the least overall and lasting effect on the system itself so I, I will walk through these as an overview in the in the focus page there is there is more detail for each one of the individual items and as well as a link to Donella Meadows original paper um, even after reading the paper several times and studying these I can't remember them all I need to go back to the diagram and the way that I use this diagram is I simply have it in front of me and I look at the different leverage points and think about the model that's been developed for the current situation and ask myself where are these different types of things that that can be affected within that model that will produce a desired alteration so the first one has to do with parameters just simply changing constants or parameters or numbers in different places within the system they they this is the lowest leverage point it's not expected to produce a lasting change within the system altering the buffers the, the stocks within the system form buffers think of uh, think of a dam in a river forming forming a, a lake it is in fact that lake that's a reservoir that serves as a buffer to allow one to to manage the the amount of, of flow that happens downstream so that in certain places increasing the size of buffers within the structure can in fact level out changes the the manner in which stocks and flows are actually interact interact the way that so what things flow from one place to another can be altered Delays in the system often have or always have a marked impact on the way that things respond based upon the delay. It can cause things to overreact or not react soon enough to changes in other places in the system so that if you can identify the delays and sometimes eliminate them or, or shorten the, the time that it takes to realize them or realize that there are delays that have to be dealt with and act accordingly the negative or balancing feedback loops different places in the structure can in fact help even out the interactions in different places and at times um, adding or increasing or decreasing that negative feedback can in fact produce a desired result though there are in fact times where you're actually what's appropriate is actually more of something where a reinforcing loop could be strengthened or created would in fact improve an aspect of the system that one is is interested in information flows from one point to another within the structure so that the system can in fact respond to something that it was not aware of previously now as I describe these you realize that that there is similarities between them so that that the information flow could in fact be in concert with a delay so that the gets the delay that's slowing down the information flow but this one you you have a tendency to think of actually adding an information flow someplace in the in the structure that wasn't there before um, altering the rules that govern the system what is it that the system is is tuned to what is it attempting to attain um, altering the that that goal of the system can have a marked effect on the uh, the up uh, the nature of the interactions themselves to evolve actually alter the structure of the system itself change the 
the goal of oh sorry this was the rules of the system in terms of of uh, who how the rules are set up and enforced from different places within the structure which is different from the goal which is what the system itself overall is attempting to maintain and then the mind of system which is essentially the underlying set of paradigms which the system operates based upon the the values and belief structures of the participants that are part of the system itself which govern the way that that the actions are taken and then finally the most difficult thing to effect which has the greatest impact on the system is the power to actually transcend the paradigms to begin with to to challenge the fundamental assumptions that that are the basis for the whole operation of the system so as you as you'll see when when I do the examples for network magic it is in fact looking at these 12 categories of, of alterations that one can consider in terms of the system the the nature of the interactions in, in an attempt to affect the structure so that the behavior changes to produce a different output hope this has been helpful see you in the next video